Service safe. Professor Buzzkill. Mini Mets. Buzzkillers, it's the old professor here with your mini myth for the week. This week we're talking about African American code quilts. Wait a minute, what are you talking about, professor? African American code quilts? That's right, Buzzkillers. I wish this myth was actually true, or at least partly true. The story here is that African Americans and others in the Underground Railroad stitched specific patterns into certain quilts as messages for runaway slaves. The idea, right, was that the quilts could be hung out on clotheslines so that the escaping slaves could, quote, read messages that directed them to safe houses, directed them where to find food, or where to hide because slave hunters happened to be around in that area. Now, If this story had been true, it would have added depth to the nature of communication on the Underground Railroad, and it would have meant a lot more people were involved in helping slaves escape than actually were. But it's not true. At least, as with all our other myths, there's no evidence for it. In fact, there's a lot of evidence against it. Many of the quilt patterns that supposedly used images to convey messages such as, quote, pick up tools and get ready to flee, unquote, which is something called the monkey wrench pattern on a quilt, or the wagon wheel pattern supposedly told slaves to pack up everything that could fit into a wagon and get ready for a signal for the time to escape. And there are lots more of these symbols, right, that would be stitched, that in theory, according to the story, would be stitched into the quilt for runaway slaves to see. Unfortunately, No independent evidence supports the story. Almost all these quilt patterns weren't used until long after the Civil War. Quilt historians, and yes, buzzkillers, there are such people as quilt historians, have shown us that the patterns that were, quote, used as, quote, codes, right, in the quilts, had either been around long before the Underground Railroad had started or hadn't developed until decades later. Also, notable members of the Underground Railroad, such as Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, had never mentioned the use of quilt codes in their accounts of the railroad, even though they talked about quilts in a lot of other ways. They talked about how quilting circles brought African-American women together in social gatherings, how quilts were very important to use for using scraps of material in order to make a, a decent piece of cloth, etc., etc., etc. No contemporary from the Underground Railroad period has ever said anything about quilt codes. Now, there are two real experts on this. The first is a quilt historian named Lee Fellner, and the second is Kate Clifford Larson, a noted scholar and expert on Harriet Tubman. They assure us that the quilt code myth is an invention of the late 20th century, sometime around the mid-80s, sometime in the early 90s. Somehow the story got started, and it spread through to teachers and then to elementary school students, and on and on and on and on and on it goes. Some of your kids might bring homework home that gives them an assignment to make a quilt code, a a quilt of runaway slave codes. The myth works, Buzzkillers, because it sounds great. Secrecy is involved. Codes are involved. And by now, it's already gotten popular in schools, elementary schools and middle schools, so it looks like it's going to be around a while. Check out our blog post on this mini-myth. There are lots of links to very good quilt historians' work on this. And Lee Fellner's website is an especially comprehensive study of quilt patterns and the whole story behind how this myth developed. Talk to you next week, Buzzkillers. Buzzkillers.